right, gang. Welcome. It's the best Tuesday I've had all week, and it is time for the True Wealth Radio Show. I am your host, Dave Littlejohn, but I have co-hosting with me, of course. Yep, Matt Dixon. And we've got... I always say we got a great show for you, right? This one is a fun show. It is. It is. Because we always talk about saving money, and we might hint at spending some. Right. That, so this is uh, an extrapolation of the marshmallow experiment as a show. Yep. I right? like it. Yep. So Talk to me. Well, not to me, because I already know what it is. But talk to the listeners a little bit about what this experiment is, maybe. OK, well, so. It, 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 let me let me get the dates right on this, because we're on camera now. The year was 1985. Thank you. <laughs> right? Yeah, it was a good I, I year, no right? Idea. Um, no, we had, um, it was actually done, I think, in the 70s. Uh, so what what happened was they took a group of kids, and they, they had a 15-minute experiment, and they said, here, we're going to give you a marshmallow, and we're going to put it in front of you on this table. And he said, if you don't eat it, we're gonna come back in 15 minutes and you can have two marshmallows. Mm -hmm. And then they walked out of the room and they watched what happened. Okay, I've seen this experiment replicated by the way. It's, it's really adorable. Wild. But um, what they found is the kids that didn't eat the marshmallow, right? That exercised some deferred or delayed gratification demonstrated in the future higher test scores and higher financial acumen and more financial success throughout their lives. Hmm. Right? Yeah. And so it is often said in financial planning circles, at least, that the single greatest determinant of somebody's financial success is their ability to delay gratification. Right. Okay. And so I want to talk about the concept of delay gratification here, but I don't just want to talk about it the way a lot of people do, which is, hey, it's compound interest and time in the markets, and you just need to start early and often and save, 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 save. Those things are not not true, but there are windows of opportunity. And what I want to help people understand is when are the times that you should seize things versus when are the times you should delay things? And I'm going to tell you, it's probably slightly disappointing is like, there is not a specific right or wrong to everything. Mm -hmm. Sometimes there's some pretty obvious ones, but not everything's obvious. And so how do you weigh these decisions and what does it mean for us both as investors and I think as kind of generally successful human beings? Right. Right? So hence the marshmallow concept, right? Is can you or can't you delay gratification? And it started by giving kids marshmallows. It's a pretty interesting experiment, especially the ones where they'll wait more than just that 15 minutes to see how long will they sit there and wait and be patient. Yeah, that, and, that's not one I've seen. Yeah. So why, why, what, what do you know that I don't? Well, they've, they've run different variations of this test okay. where it's like, hey, you know, it's not just going to be one or two marshmallows. You're going to get a lot more, but you just got to wait 15 minutes, but they don't come back in for over an hour. And sometimes the kid is still sitting there, and they'll they'll grab the marshmallow, they'll look at it, smell it, yeah, they'll <laughs> smell it, they'll think about it, and then you see it on their face, like nope, 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 I can't do it, and they'll set it back down. Um, but it's really interesting to watch the behaviors and how long can you actually delay it for? And some people can delay for an extremely long period of time. I think there are some. Uh, there's probably a lot more correlation type research elements to this in terms of personality and so forth mm -hmm. but well and a lot of it is trained behavior too like looking at like how did the parents raise that child that really can yeah. be a huge um, determining factor in what type of results you're getting yeah and you know what's really fascinating this was not the we're not going to delve deep into the show or into this during the show because honestly it gets out of my pay grade in a hurry it's fascinating to see some of the brain research these days and like the, the neural pathways that are formed and the way uh, like the dopamine and serotonin cycles that occur mm -hmm. and how that plays into things. Uh, there's a lot of research now about how doing hard things grows a specific part of your brain that makes it easier to do hard things, right? So it's almost like you can train for more bravery or boldness. Wow. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's wild. That's fascinating um, to think about. Well, I mean, here's the thing. Somebody asked me the other day, you know, do you think that you can, uh, if you're born with certain habits, can you break them? And I said, yeah, I absolutely think you can. And 
the question got a little more complicated when I said, well, can you overcome genetics for things like longevity? And I said, well, I think you can do things that improve the odds. Mm -hmm. And so you can, you can make an impact. But the brain in particular is neuroelastic, right? This ability to rewire it if you do it on purpose. A lot of people don't actually think about the brain as a key element in your longevity, right? Like mm -hmm. we always think about, you know, what are we doing physically to make sure that, you know, our muscles, right, are sure. maybe in shape or, you know, we're drinking our milk and taking calcium so that our bones are strong. But a lot of people actually, I think, you know, especially later on in retirement, they might walk away from work where they were really actively using that brain and then they just kind of sit there and hang out and it's crazy how fast the brain can kind of deteriorate and unwind on you if you're not using it or challenging it or doing stuff to you know expand your knowledge base and some of the most successful people I've seen in their older age are people that are like playing an instrument for example mm -hmm. or they're doing some sort of sport or you know crossword puzzles just things that are engaging they're traveling they're doing things it yeah. really does make a big difference I think in your longevity are you keeping that brain engaged and active I, I don't have the research in front of me but I have no reason to doubt it and anecdotally I've seen the same thing you're talking about mm -hmm. that you in you know we don't think about it as it's part of the muscle group right like if the mind's a muscle you have to exercise it mm -hmm. right or it'll atrophy Right. Okay. And, and that's assuming you don't have a disease or something else that robs you of it. Uh, you know, as far as I know, time is undefeated. Yep. Right. Like everybody dies. Uh, so that's, you know, that's a thing. But the quality of life, this is something I really want to focus on. Um, if you're listening out there, I will refer by first name only and say, I got this term from Carol. Okay. Okay. Who's awesome. Um, but she explained to me one of the terms. It's probably not unique to her, but she's the one that introduced me to it. QTR. Okay. Quality time remaining. Correct. Quality heard time you, remaining. I've heard you talk about this a little bit. Yep. And so this is the matter of, like, when you're a teenager, again, barring some kind of accident, you have still decades in front of you, typically. And so you have plenty of quality time remaining. The value of deferring gratification is really high, mm -hmm. okay? But, or at least depending on what it is, right? That's the other thing is, is it valuable to defer? So we're gonna try to unpack that a little bit today, right. okay? But for somebody that is older, let's say you're in your 70s, the value of deferral, depending on what it is, may be very low. Right, right? especially if you have enough, you know, assets or resources in order to, you know, you're, you're gonna be fine. Maybe it is time to, to do that thing or take that trip, whatever that is. Because like you just said, how much quality time do you have? Yeah, yeah. So what we wanna talk about a little bit today is the frame up of how do you decide what to defer now? We know that it's a good idea to defer, right? The stats play out. In fact, um, what we were looking at, something like 20% uh, uh, more savings and lower debt for somebody that's practiced at deferred gratification. Yeah. These are just some of the well, anecdotal stats, right? it doesn't have right? to be deferring, you know, huge things. All I mean, it can be deferring little tiny pieces often. A lot of people forget about that. It's like, oh, well, you passed up on that $5 coffee on the way to work and you made yourself a 50 cent cup of coffee. And you delay that long enough, that can add up. That plays out. And, and by the way, this isn't just finance. No. Okay? This is the walking by the treat bowl and not eating an extra piece of chocolate, right? Think about over a lifetime, the compounding effect of an extra 50 calories a day, mm -hmm. right? 3,600 calories in an excess pound, right? A pound of fats, 3,600 calories. So you, you do the math on that, right? So right. every 18 days, if you had an extra 50 calories, in theory, I think I'm doing the math, right? That you'd end up with, or no, I just double that, right? So it'd be every 72 days, you'd add a pound. Right. Which is about four pounds a year or five pounds a year. Right. Do that over 20 years. Mm -hmm. You're 100 pounds overweight. Right. That's a 50 calorie a day slippage over the years, right? And so... The same happens, the same way you t good habits take things back off. So um, one of the things we'll talk about today a little bit, concept of micro habits, okay? How you risk, how you, how you weigh the risk and reward of a decision and the, uh, what do we call it, Matt? The 
uh, the when if ever mm -hmm. phrase, right? When yeah. if ever. So we want to talk about some of these things. We want to help uh, our listeners, and maybe maybe this isn't for you, but maybe you're looking for a way to frame this for somebody else because they're struggling to make their way through a decision, okay? Maybe so. Then this may be the program for them, okay? Nice. So when we come back, let's crack into the idea of, okay, what are some of the things that we should be deferring or I've not? I've got a good example for you, actually. Okay, I'm, I'm listening. Well, you said we're going to break, though. So well, we, so, so, all right, Matt, yeah. very, very sly right there, teasing the nest segment. I so Matt's am, got I'm some teasing. examples, but when we come back, we're going to talk about when do we take action or when don't we and why. Stick around, we'll be right back. I'm Dave Littlejohn. And Matt Dixon. You got True Wealth on News Radio 93.9 FM and 1240 KQEN. Matt, you had some examples. Look, today we're talking about the, the appropriateness or lack thereof mm -hmm. for deferring gratification. Basically, when should you take action and when should you wait? Right. Well, and you had some examples that you wanted to maybe yeah, give. Yeah, one in particular. All right. And it's kind of around education and in this theory of like, should I start this career? Should I delay this career? And I thought back to a time when I think minimum wage in Oregon was like seven something an hour, right? Okay. And I was fresh out of high school and I got a job making over 18 an hour. And so at the time it looked like great money, right? Mm -hmm. And so I was working this job to pay for school. And I could have kept the job and just said to heck with college, you know, I'm making $11 an hour more than minimum wage. I can just stay here. And it would have had a retirement plan. The whole works, right? And everyone at the uh, job was like, hey. You can just say it. Yeah, I mean, like, we all kind of are figuring it out if yeah. you're local anyway. And they were like, hey, you know, you got to get out of here. You got to you gotta go on, find a, you know, finish college, do that whole deal, and, you know, move on. And I did. And I'm really glad I did because that job today is probably paying, you know, $23, $24 an hour. Not a lot more than it was you know, back when I was doing that, what, 15 plus years ago? Yeah. And so I look at that and I'm like, you know, it was worth it to go get the education, get the degree and move on to new things, even though I could have been, you know, making a lot of money for Whole that time. separate show about the value of education. Uh, I will simply summarize it as we've talked about this before too. I think education really needs to be looked at as an investment in oneself. Mm -hmm. And when you're calculating whether or not something's an investment, you calculate anticipated return. Yeah. So this is really interesting with your example. Let me just piggyback on that for a sec. Sure. Um, I used to hear stuff, my folks would talk about this too. And uh, they talk about, hey, you could come out of the gate really strong, uh, but if you cap out earlier, there's a point at which delaying gratification may put you in a higher career path. So let me give you an example today. This, by the way, is getting the math is changing on this, but it used to be, let's say you were going to become a mechanic mm -hmm. and you, you know, you go through maybe just some industry certifications. It wasn't formal schooling, but you went through some industry certifications. You might've been able to have been trained on the job somewhere and you would make a decent hourly wage. And let's in back, this was, you know, 20 years ago, but let's say you're making $50 an hour. Okay. That's a pretty solid wage. Mm -hmm. uh, but you could have also gone to medical school and come out. And so I don't really, math on $50 an hour is what, right? 100-ish a year? I'm going to have to do math in real time. Yeah. But uh, that, that's a great you know, salary at, at that range. Okay. But there are doctors that are making 250, dollars 300000 or more, right? Surgeons making half a million dollars a year. And you think, well then the surgeon is clearly better. He said, ah, but wait, if you get to start pretty much right out of school, mm -hmm. so from the age of, tw let's say 20 to 65, and you're making 100 grand a year, and you get everything paid for, and you kind of come out of the gate pretty strong, and you, you don't cap have out, any debt, no debt. Yeah, you cap out, well, a doctor's gonna go to like another 10 years of schooling and residency or more, right, mm -hmm. 12 years, right? So you look at, they're gonna start more than a decade later than you. They're going to get paid a whole lot more, but they're going to come out with close to a million dollars worth of debt, too. Right. They're going to have to pay all that debt back, and then, then they're going to have to pile in a whole lot more later to catch up to where you were because you had all this time. So the math is not always that obvious. That's right? true. And, and here's the other thing that happens with, and I'm not going to pick on doctors, but say a lot of high earners, 
right? If they come out with a lot of debt and then they find themselves in high earning positions, didn't necessarily develop the skill set to manage the money. And so if they end up spending as much as they're making and they don't pay down the debts, they get to a point later in life where they go, wait a second, the math isn't what I thought. I had a much more extravagant lifestyle because I had capital going through my life, but I didn't pay down the debts and I created a different issue, right? So that, that delayed gratification was so long and, and the lessons weren't necessarily learned. It was just, well, I went to med school, so I didn't have any money to spend and I didn't have any time to spend it. But when I finally did, it's like I started buying sports cars and big houses Yeah, and never paid the debt off. It's interesting that you brought that up. It kind of triggered something in the back of my mind where I was listening to Dave Ramsey talk one time and he was giving the professions on average that have the highest net worth you mm -hmm. know, coming into retirement. And it would shock you what some of those professions were. They weren't jobs that paid a ton of money, but it, what they found was it's sometimes less about what you make and more about the principles and the discipline that you have throughout the years because you know you have really good behavior for a really long time frame that often ends up putting you in a better position than a lot of pay and bad habits yeah and we really are talking about financial habits here mm -hmm. and I think it's important that we recognize that uh, I'll, I'll draw a, a contrast in a moment here but financial habits uh, there's some there's some things that are so basic and they're not necessarily intuitive for people I, I I think a lot of this is how people are wired, believe it or not. But again, I also believe you can learn things and and sort of forcefully rewire your mind if you want to. Like you right. can train yourself into different behavior. And one of them is, it always shocks me when people spend more than they earn, right? That they think, oh, I have access to credit so I can go ahead and do these things. So I want the vacation, well, I want it now. So I, I borrow money to go on vacation, then I have to pay it back. Well, and then you also have the person that's close to that, but a little bit better. They're the person that says, hey, you know, I've got $6,000 a month coming in. I'm going to figure out a way to have that camp trailer and the boat and the house. Yeah, everything's and built around the cash flow. It's yeah. 100% designed around the cash flow. I think and that's a, lo a, a that's lot America, of people, by the way. That's America. Yes, I think that is America. It's like, well, I can afford to keep the plates spinning, therefore mm -hmm. I'm winning. Yeah, and then you get a raise and you're like, sweet, I'm making another $500 a month. What toy can we put in the garage? Right. And, and the spiral continues. Well, and it's this is an interesting one for me personally. I never understood that. I saw people that were younger than me that had just a ton of stuff. Mm -hmm. And I was just sort of Same. shocked by this. Like, how do you have all this stuff? I can't afford any of this. Mm -hmm. But their definition of afford is different. It is, yep. we can keep the payments on the merry-go-round. Yep. Right? It has nothing to do with whether or not it's getting paid for or if their net worth is increasing. It's just, no, we just keep the merry-go-round spinning. Well, and how many times are those people buying a depreciating asset where it's like, I'm leveraged up for the next nine years or whatever, and by the time I'm done making these payments, my stuff's going to be worth less than half of what I yeah. bought it for, but gosh darn it, that's when I just go and yeah. buy the next thing. Here's a funny thing, too. I, I don't know why I've never thought about this before. This is a, like a real-time epiphany. Hey, <laughs> you know, there's another name for a depreciating asset. What? A liability. <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. I mean, this thing is not making you money. Right. It's not storing value. It's a melting ice cube. Yeah. Right. So now there will be people out there that are going to rationalize this by saying, yeah, but I get to have all this fun and make all these memories and say, well, maybe. Mm -hmm. Okay. Maybe. Or you're going to be so stressed out trying to pay all those bills that, yeah, you might be gone for the weekend having fun, but you know what awaits you Monday through Friday. Yeah. So, and this is a really natural segue into a really critical point. Notice earlier, if you were listening, we were real careful about our language. We said, some things you should defer, mm -hmm. okay? Not everything, okay? Now, this one, I do not want somebody to take this as a point to rationalize bad financial decisions, right? <laughs> yeah, we bought the camp trailer and the quads and the snowmobiles and the boat and, I, and you know, and we got a new vehicle and like it's on and we're leasing it and you know, we're like, we're, but we're, we're kind of shuffling the payments around and I can mostly make it. Sometimes I put a lot on the credit card in order to make it work. And then, you know, but groceries got more expensive and oh my gosh, right, it's hard. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, a, that's bad financial behavior. 
Well, and you're always just one mistake or one little whoopsie away from losing yeah. it all. That's the thing is, you know, it's a house of cards. Yeah. It's built on your ability to keep the plates spinning all the time. And I think folks have willful blindness to the risk, mm -hmm. right? They just do it on, on purpose. They know, but they want, don't want to know. So that's one of those issues. So those are examples where you probably should be delaying gratification. Right. Okay. You can't have all of the toys. Or, and, or the experiences you want to have, like you can pick an experience, but not all the experiences, right? Okay, you really love to ride quads with people. Like if you have a quad, that's your toy. You don't get to have the quads and the boat yeah. and the second boat, right? Because we need a ski boat and we need a, you know, a river boat. It's like that, that, well, if that pump, math doesn't math. Pump the brakes, David. A guy needs four boats. Okay. <laughs> okay. It's not a one. Right. It's a need. So when you call the office, you ask for Matt if, yeah, this, you, if you're that guy, just so you're right. clear, right? That's right. <laughs> um, yeah. You're... <laughs> You're gonna do that, aren't you? Pat? I will. Oh my I'll just gosh. I'll just reclassify it on here. The boats yeah, he's are like, no, need. no, that's an asset. Promise. <laughs> well, the crazy thing lately is some of these things really have appreciated. Oh, it's nuts. You know, with the way pricing has gone with COVID, the secondary market for a lot of these things has appreciated. Right? You may have purchased a an RV or a trailer or something and not lost money in it. Mm -hmm. That's rare, right? It is rare. Uh, so I don't want us to try to rationalize that decision. I think the bigger thing. Here's what I want to compare it to, though. When we talk about risk and reward is a different kind of uh, analysis. When mm -hmm. you're talking about investments, saying, well, how much am I risking and how much will I earn? Okay. I want to talk about the, uh, how do I keep trying to remember what to say, it's, it's the, um, what do they call it? Now, if, when? Oh, yeah. if not now, then when? Yeah. How about that? Well, or, or it, yeah, it's the, it's if if, if when or like if ever or never kind of thing. It's, yeah. it's I had a fun phrasing for it. I should have written it down. That's what I get. But the idea is some things, if not now, when or if ever. Yeah. Yeah. If the not if now, ever if ever. Is the scarier one. Right? I think because that's the thing. Is certain things. Yeah. There's just these moments in time, and we have to do the math different. This mm -hmm. is really hard in the financial world because everybody says delay gratification, right? But you, you think about, okay, how many birthdays do you get with your kids? Mm -hmm. That doesn't mean having an extravagant birthday you can't afford, but it may mean spending the time with your kid rather than going fishing or something like that. Because sure. there's only so many birthdays, right? right? There's only so many tuck-ins of your, your kid, mm -hmm. right, in a lifetime, yeah. okay? There's only so many times that you're gonna see your parents yep. before you know, they, if all goes normally, they're, they're going to age out someday and, and you won't have them anymore. There's only such a, a realistic window of time to start a family. This is probably the, the trickiest one right now because culturally, it, we, a lot of things have moved around. People are, are waiting to have kids till a lot older because they're going through education. They're trying to get financially stable in a world where it's actually damn hard to get financially stable right now. If, mm -hmm. you, if you're starting from zero, it's hard. It well, is not undoable, but it's yeah. hard. Well, that was one of the things I told my wife. I said, hey, you know, I don't want to start a family while we're renting and we don't have assets of any sort. Like, I want to be able to have a house with enough square feet to where, you know, we don't feel like the walls are caving in on us. So, yeah, we intentionally delayed that a little bit and pushed it out because right. it's like we got to be in a good enough spot to where I feel comfortable enough to say, hey, we can take care of a kid and we're not going to be living on the fringe the whole yeah. time. I think the tricky part of this one is there's never a perfect time. No. Right? Certain things, there's never a perfect time, so there's just the time you're going to choose. And there's a window where you get the choice, and then after that, there's a window where you don't. Mm -hmm. Okay? It's true. And so those are the things where you have to decide your priorities. Silly example, right? I don't care if I ever hike Mount Everest. It's not a thing that's a priority to me. Somebody out there it is. Right. And that's just really important. And they're going to sacrifice other things in their life so that they can do that. Or even possibly their own life. They, they, they may. Right? right. But for whatever reason, that is a mm -hmm. premium priority for them. And so their life's going to get designed around making that happen. And I'm not here to endorse or otherwise shame the life decisions. I mean, I'll, I'll You're probably... This is kind of like the bucket list thing, right? Like... 
A little. Yeah. Some of it's just, look, I, you know, I got friends and, you know, part of their family culture is they love to go camping, right? And it's just what they do. And they like, and they, they'll, they'll take the trailer over and they'll take their quads and they play on the sand dunes. And that's mm -hmm. just like what they do. And most right. of their vacations, that's what it is. Mm -hmm. And I'm okay with that. Yeah. Right? But it still has to fit within a lifestyle that you can afford and sustain. Absolutely. Right? So somebody says, well, I want this lifestyle, but I can't afford it. So I don't care that you want it. If you can't afford it, you can't have it. Mm -hmm. That's the key. That's the part where that's not delaying gratification. That's avoiding stupidity. Okay, let's be really clear about it. I'll say that again. Right. Delaying gratification is not the same as avoiding stupidity, but they oftentimes walk and talk at the same time. Yes. So don't be stupid, <laughs> and that may actually be delaying gratification, but we have enough stupid out there, right? And I, what I have is a lot lower threshold for the complainers that have willful blindness, right? Like you are stupid <laughs> and then you complain to other people by pretending you weren't stupid. We knew you were stupid, okay? Decisions have consequences. Yep. I'm just gonna say it, Yeah. right? And there's not, the world doesn't exist without consequences, despite what the government will tell you. Right. <laughs> it's just not going to happen, right? You promise you that everything will be free. No, it won't. Well, it never will be. Yeah. So, uh, anyway, enough of the bandwagon stuff here. Or not bandwagon, enough of the soapbox. That's what I should have said, right? So, there's a time to defer, there's a time not to. Now, how do you assess? That's a great question. It is. What we're going to do, we're going to take a break. When we come back, we're going to give you at least some statistical fighting chance at assessing whether or not this is a want or a need and whether or not you should defer. Stick around. We'll be back. I'm Dave Littlejohn. And Matt Dixon. You got True Wealth on News Radio 93.9 FM and 1240 KQEN. Uh, welcome back to the True Wealth Show, guys. Uh, Dave and Matt in studio. Today is the show about when to delay or not delay gratification. Right. One of the key... Uh, elements in long-term financial success, right? If you mm -hmm. can't defer gratification, you are you better find a way to be an extraordinary earner because of, yeah. you're probably going to squander a lot. One of the tough things I've seen with a lot of people is they're they're good at actually delaying gratification, and they're pedaling really really hard. Mm -hmm. But if you ask them why are you pedaling or where are you pedaling to? They don't know. There might be an arbitrary number that they have in mind. I've seen that multiple times. But working hard, working smart, but for what? Mm -hmm. And what, what direction are you really headed? Because the game of more is really frivolous unless you know what that more is for. It's, it, yeah, well, you can't win, right? You can't no. win the game of more, and it, the purpose is diminishing, right? If there's... Uh, most most folks out there that talk about success, it's like, well, you need sort of a relentless burning desire and you need sort of a purpose or a mission to mm -hmm. what you're doing. When you have a mission, you feel like there's a calling to do something. If you're just right. doing it because, well, these are the motions I was told to go through. I'm, so uh, you're, you're just kind of on the assembly line, cranking fast, mm -hmm. but, but the output is irrelevant to you. You're just doing your function on the assembly line. That's not necessarily a recipe for meaning. No, and the sad part is those people are often either depressed or feeling down about things because if the game is more, you never actually hit that. And so you're always, even if you're doing great, you're just looking at it like, well, why am I, why am I not doing more? Why do I not have more? And then you're just frustrated with everything. Yeah, and you, know, you could really go down the um, psychology rabbit hole with this one. You could. Right? You really can because there's elements of like what, what's your motivation? Is it ego driven mm -hmm. or fragile ego driven? Is which is really the more common, right? It's sure. like, hey, I I'm actually insecure, so I'm trying to mask that by performance or something Success, else. Success, yeah. yeah. Achievements. So that's, that's a huge one, right? Mm -hmm. uh, it could be that was all that was modeled, right? Mm -hmm. Hey, you're supposed to go work hard, and so there's a certain amount of duty or obligation. Right. But that becomes hollow at some point too. And so uh, I think this, this, the spiritual landscape has tried to sort this out forever, right? I mean, all the various religions out there, not going to get super evangelical, just, you know, wasp guy, just so you know. Mm -hmm. But um, I think that that's been a struggle of humanity for a long time. It's like, why? Mm -hmm. Like, why? 
And, and that, isn't that kind of what you're asking? It's like, yeah. what, why are you doing that? And somebody goes, uh, it never really occurred to me. I was just yeah. doing it faster. Here's, here's another question you can throw on top of that, another layer. You can say, okay, well, what happens when you get there? And almost every time I ask that question, it's crickets. Yeah. Well, I'm going to go do this thing. And then it's like, well, is that really what you want to do? Is that what's going to make you happy? And it's like, uh, um, maybe. And so it's just not well thought out often. Yeah. Well, because the idea is, hey, I got to the top of this mountain, and now what? And you go, well, I better find a new mountain. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and maybe, I think that what you're suggesting, though, is a lot of people are just climbing. They're not even sure if they're on a mountain. They just know they're just, well, I just got to keep on this trail. We can tie that back to social media, I think. A lot of it yeah. is, right? So, because and, and just so everybody knows, that's, so that was a big part of what this segment was about. Is like I think social media has really kind of told a great lie to people. And so there's this incredible distraction. And it only fuels this, question, this scenario you're yeah. talking about where we don't really know the why, but we just have this we relentless know one of the causes, push to keep yeah. up. I mean, you look at it. Over 40% of millennials right now are in debt because of that fact that they're Just trying, trying to, to chase maintain a lifestyle. lifestyle. Yeah, and they see it on Instagram. It's like, hey, look at this girl. She's on a beach in this country. We got to go there. And yeah, I guess we could put it on a credit card and make that happen for you. You do that too many times, and yeah. it's devastating. Well, and how many of these people, it's a fake life? Oh, it's right? so fake. There are some like influencer multimillionaires like they sure. exist and they're making tons of money and they re it's it's a real lifestyle but, but it's that's sad. the exception to me, to me it's really sad you're living all of these moments to show it to other people and you're you're working to document it but you're not living in it you're not taking it in because you're busy documenting it how many of these people are just going to look back one day and be like yeah i was there and i saw the sunset but i saw it through my phone yeah, and I don't, I don't even know the answer. I wasn't looking right? at my loved one. I was looking at my phone. I was posting it on Instagram. I was posting it's, it on Facebook. And it's like, you just missed it. It's, it's funny. It's be bad. You know, we were talking about this, too, back at the office. The idea that um, for a lot of people, watching it through the TV screen gives a lot of the same and dopamine response mm -hmm. as if they were doing it. So right. uh, we were talking about like you can watch somebody climb a mountain and you're like, well, that's like getting 70, 80% of the experience is watching somebody else do it in terms of the chemical response. Right. And so people are like, well, I feel like I kind of did it. I don't need to do that now. But the question I have is, do you want to look back on your life and say, I was a spectator or I was a participant? It's so addicting is the other thing. People mm -hmm. don't want to talk about how addictive it is. I went without Instagram for like two years straight. And someone wanted, uh, had sent me something like, you gotta see this, so I re-downloaded it to you know, take a peek at whatever it was that they sent me. And it stuck on my phone. I was like, I'll just delete it the day of, right? No, it stuck on my phone for like three months. And then I kind of woke up and was like, whoa, it managed to work its way back into the ecosystem, so I had to go in and delete it. But Man, it, what what chance do we have when you have companies with trillions of dollars, and you know billions know of dollars of algorithm. resources, trillions yeah. of dollars in value, and their job is to sort of hack into your mind and get mm -hmm. you to pay attention as long as possible, right. and they'll do it through what they, they track your behavior. Yep and figure out what your button is to push. Oh, they you know love it. kittens or puppies or mm -hmm. fishing or, you know, the, the number one thing is just very little clothing and a lot of skin like that. And that's what sells. Yep. And absolutely. so that's what they do. Mm -hmm. Okay. The problem is for most of us, like what we don't see is we see everybody else living this life and we don't recognize it as a lie, mm -hmm. right? It is a massive lie that's perpetrated to get you to think that you are missing something and so you'll change your behavior to try to seek it. How much family time is lost to that? That's the oh, amazing yeah. part to me. It's like you want healthy kids that perform well or you know are social and can engage in a conversation. Well, what do you expect? If you're tuned out on your phone 24 seven, so is your spouse, and the kid's looking at you and you're not looking at them, I'm telling you, I have such a bad fear for millennials and their kids. Yeah. Well, I I think it could just I have be considered a devastating generation. Personally, creating the equivalent of a time box that says when I come home at a certain point, I place my phones and tablets and everything mm -hmm. in this box and 
They can be on chargers, right? Because right? these are real tools. Like a phone is a tool. Okay, the problem is that sometimes you become the tool using it instead of the other way around. And so put it somewhere, shut it away. I mean, real example, right, mm -hmm. is I don't keep my phone in my bedroom. It's in our master bathroom and... Uh, oh, sitting on the counter in the bathroom, yeah? Yeah, or it, well, it used to be, and I just changed the charger, but it was under my sink. Mm. I actually put it out of sight and put it physically away. Out of sight, out of mind. It helps, you, you know need what, that an detox. Another thing that helps, delete all the things that you find interesting off of your phone and turn it into a phone. Yeah, right? Wouldn't I, it be weird if the phone was a phone? Do you know how long it took for me to reprogram my brain? When you open your phone and there's no Facebook, there's no Instagram, the only thing that's on there is maps, texting, phone calls, and like one or two other things. You just you're not stuck to it. You'll watch your screen time go down. You re-engage, it's a, it's a powerful well, thing. Well, and it's amazing how the house gets a little cleaner, the garage is a little cleaner, For the, the car's a little hey. cleaner. Like, all of a sudden you've got this bandwidth that you didn't realize the time that you were just sort of squandering. I, I talked to someone the other day that had a shopping addiction and they went through and they deleted all their shopping apps off their phone. They're saving like $800 a month just yeah. by taking that away. Yeah. No, it's, but here's the thing, you have to do it on purpose. Yeah. Right? You have it's to not going to happen it. by accident. You have to want it. So, all right. Well, look, I'm looking at the clock. We're running long. I think okay. what we need to do is grab this last break. When we come back, let's talk a little bit about how does one find the balance, right? Between Perfect. doing it now, deferring till later, and more. But we got to take a break. Stick around. I'm Dave Littlejohn. And Matt Dixon. You got True Wealth on News Radio 939 FM and 1240 KQEN. All right, you're going to have to say it all over again, but this time with the listeners paying attention. All right, attention. I'm ready. All right, welcome back to the True Wealth Show. Dave Littlejohn in studio today with Matt Dixon. Okay, uh, we have been talking about when do you defer gratification, when don't you, and how do we seek balance? And the show's been all over the board. I would really encourage you to grab the podcast. It's at littlejohnfs.com. Not so subtle plug for our website where you can learn more about our business. But uh, today, the, it's, it's just kind of funny when you, you have financial guys are saying, I get it, delaying gratification is a skill. You need to, to flex that skill in order to be financially successful. But sometimes you also need to recognize when it's time to take action. Mm -hmm. And how does one find the balance? Right. You know, I think one of the first things we were hinting at in the last segment is figure out what are the unnecessary distractions. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right. And one of the most common today is your phone. And it's not because of the phone. It's because of what we put on it. Right. Right. And I think social media and online shopping are probably two of the biggest time thieves and joy thieves out there. Yep. Right. Because it really does. Uh, what, the, what is this? What, I think it was Churchill that said, you know, comparison is the thief of joy. Right. Right. And um, that's, a, that's a really important thing to consider. It's like when you start comparing yourself to everybody else, it steals from your joy. Right. A and I can assure you everybody else is comparing them themselves to somebody else too, most of the time. So... I should say, not everybody, but I would tell you, if, if you're comparing yourself to somebody else, especially somebody that appears to have more than you, if that person is like trying to glamorize their life on social media, mm -hmm. there's, there's a very, very high probability their life isn't better, it's curated. Right. Right? The, the, how many people are famous and miserable? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right? So just be aware. And, you know, like how, many, how many brilliant comedians have we seen that, that they're no longer with us because they just, behind the scenes, they were miserable. Right, you thought they were funny, yeah. but. I mean, the one that comes to mind immediately was Robin Williams. Yeah. Right, you know, here's a man who was tortured behind the scenes and you thought his life was great. Right, he put on a great, yeah. you know, and show when the I think that on. that is a lot of the world. So the first one is just stop believing in the lies from the rest of the world, Yeah. right? And so uh, if, you can, if you can get away from some of those vices, it'll really help, but. How does one assess when to act and when not to, Matt? Yeah, I mean, sometimes I think it's just, you gotta look at a situation and know, hey, how many more of these opportunities am I gonna get, right? Like, I can think, uh, think back to a personal example. My dad and I, we booked a, a, an elk hunt in Wyoming this year. We had talked about it for like 10 years. And I looked at this and I'm like, 
man, Dad, you're not getting any younger. You know, you're 68 years old. Uh, elk hunting's not easy. These are big animals that, you know, if you get one, requires a lot of work to get one out. Mm -hmm. I'm like, we're just doing it. I'm tired of waiting for the perfect opportunity. We're just going to go to Wyoming. We're going to do this hunt. And so I was like, it's time. Spend the money. Yeah, the tag is 10 times more expensive than the one in Oregon, but it's the experience that we both wanted for a long time, and I'm like, we're doing it. So yeah. we did. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, you know, there's a lot of instances like that, though, where you can look at it and say, how many more opportunities do I get at this? And when it's time to spend money, you'll know. And you'll have the money there because you did delay the gratification. That's the other thing. Like, look at, look at the bank account or look at the retirement account. Is the money there to do it? And does the financial plan that you have say, hey, you know, this fits? Because so if it fits. There's the magic, right? Does it fit in the plan? Right. I talked to someone the other day. They're like, I want to buy this $400,000 house. Mm -hmm. They're almost 70 years old. And that was like their entire life savings. I'm like, no. Like, you can't do it. Like, yeah, you it's, can't it's, be a liquid at 70. That's no, just you, the thing. No, you just can't do it because you can't risk running out of money and becoming homeless, right? Like, you got to stay within the parameters that make sense. Yeah. yeah. And peop a lot of people get that, though. It's like... So here's a, a framework that I use to help me make decisions, right? I start with the concept. This, this came from a different mentor of mine, but it's that everything's a trade, mm -hmm. right? We're making trades all the time. And we're saying, if I do this thing, uh, there's something else I'm not going to do. And that happens all the time. Right. So the question is, how do you weigh the trade and is it worth it? Right. Right. So that would be the way I would describe it is, am I fully evaluating the what the trade is? Because I think what a lot of people do is they just pretend it's not a trade. I just want it. I'm not going to look at the, the negative consequences. I'm just going to do what I want. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to later on, I'm going to deal with the consequences. And then, you know, there's a bit of like, oh, what was me? I'm like, well, no, I mean, so. What you're telling me is, in retrospect, that was a bad trade, right? Which if, one? They, if you do something and you regret it, you're saying that oh. was a bad trade. Yeah. Okay. And so, what I'm suggesting is, evaluate it from that perspective. Is what I am giving up worth it? Yeah. Are you okay? going to regret it after you do it? Yeah. And so, that I think is a good. And the other thing is, will I regret it if I don't? I always ask myself the question: Am I harming my future self? That's the same way. That's yeah. the same question phrased a different way, right? Which is, will I regret it if I don't? Mm -hmm. Okay, because that's a pretty pretty big deal too. It's well, some people just never regret anything, though. They'll just march on like I no regrets, and it's like, <laughs> okay, yeah. Well, uh, you know that kind of comes back to intentionality then. Yeah. Because if, if if you don't really care what the outcome is, then I guess it doesn't matter. Yeah. Right. Great. If you're going to be miserable, well, I don't care. I don't regret it. It's like, hmm. all right, then just be comfortable in your misery. <laughs> I love that. You know? Yeah. I'm mean, like, fine. If that's how you want to play it, I mean, I'm not judging you for it. I'm just saying, right. don't complain to me about it. If you Ooh, had other opportunities yeah. and you're like, well, you know what? Screw it. I can do whatever I want and, and I'm going to complain about it too. That's a big piece. Yeah. It just, it, that's the part that I go, Look, if you, you can't just keep your complain. mouth shut about it, yeah. fine, right? Yeah, if you, you say it doesn't matter. Yeah, go, go make all the bad decisions we want if you're going to sure. own them. Yeah, <laughs> right? but don't come complaining after yeah. you've done it. Don't expect somebody else to bail you out, right? Yeah. It's like, oh, I, I made all the terrible decisions. I did all the grasshopper decisions, and I want the ant to give me, you know, to bail me out. Like, mm -hmm. No, no. It's called accountability. Try it. Yeah. Right? And so that's, I think that's the, the, the final straw. And, and again, I'm not saying it's going to be easy. Like, that's mm -hmm. the thing like, I, I get for folks that if you don't think it's more expensive for young people today, you're living in dreamland. It's expensive. OK, yep. like it just costs more. Lots of stuff costs more. But that doesn't mean it's not possible. OK, that's I'm just saying it's going to take a lot of intentionality. And I, you might be surprised how much you claim back in your life if you put the phone down and you put some of the social media down and you get to the business of living life and doing some of it rather mm -hmm. than watching everybody else do it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So look, if the key is the plan and whether or not it fits in the plan so that you can evaluate whether or not the trade is worth it. 42% more likely to achieve your goals if you've got one. How do they get started with a plan, Matt? Well, 
why don't you just head over to our website? That'll make it easy. Little Good. John. Yeah it, was, yeah, it wasn't even a subtle plug at this no. point. Matt, how can they reach us for help? Let's go to littlejohnfs.com. You can chat us there. We'll get back to you when we got time. Yep. So um, the phone number is too hard to remember anyway. So littlejohnfs.com. Yeah. Go or you can call or text 541-375-0898. But yeah, we're out of time for today. But if we can give you a hand, please give us a call. If it's not us, find somebody you like and trust and work with them. Until next next time. I'm Dave Littlejohn. And Matt Dixon. You've been listening to True Alt on News Radio 93.9 FM and 1240 KQEN.